My sister makes a great seven layer dip. Not one layers, not two layers, but seven, seven. Stay tuned for more about the seven layer dip. Hi, thank you for tuning in to Sea Life TV today. I appreciate it. My name is Daryl Chesser. And today I'm going to be reading from one of the teachings I've posted on social media. And this, was, this one is entitled, Seven Layer Dip. Yeah, I said it, saying seven layer dip. So before we go, I want to tell you about sealifeministries.org. I believe it's here, if I'm not mistaken. And if not, it's here. Maybe that's it. Anyway, it's somewhere in there. Uh, uh, sealifeministries.org is our uh, ministry page. There's some free resources there. There's a uh, most current video on that front page. And then in the media page, there's the archive for all of our videos and teachings and for Sea Life TV. Then below that on the media page is a free resource of uh, audio recordings. There's well over a thousand uh, audio recordings from 1975 on from our church Covenant Life Church at that time, all the way through here, now Sea Life Ministries to this day. So please go there, listen to as many as you want, some great names ministering there, some great words, everything that can bless you and your family. So today, seven layer dip. First of all, we're going to start with Elijah. Elijah had just prophesied three and a half years of no rain and then God told him, go. Let me read 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 2 through 16. Then the Lord's word came to Elijah, go from here and turn east. Hide by the Cherith brook that faces the Jordan River. You can drink from the brook. I've also ordered the ravens to provide for you there. Elijah went and did just what the Lord said. He stayed by the Cherith brook that faced the Jordan River. And the ravens brought bread and meat in the mornings and evenings. And he drank from the Cherith brook. After a while, the brook dried up because there was no rain in the land. Hello. I mean, he is the one that prophesied it. He's the one that said there's not going to be any rain until I say three and a half years. Here we are. There's no rain in the land. And now his brook dried up. Let's read on. So the Lord's word came to Elijah, get up and go to Zarephath near Sidon and stay there. I have ordered a widow there to take care of you. Elijah left and went to Zarephath. As he came to the town gate, he saw a widow collecting sticks and he called out to her, please get me a little water from uh, in this cup so I can drink. So she went to get some water. He then said to her, please get me a piece of bread. And she said, as surely as the Lord your God lives, I don't have any food, only a handful of flour in a jar and a bit of oil in a bottle. Look at me. I'm collecting two sticks so that I can make some food for myself and my son and we'll eat the last of the food and then die. Wow. God sent me to this. The <laughs> Elijah's probably going, let that. God, God's going to provide for me a widow who's about to die. This is her last meal. I went, man, I've really missed it. Uh, but Elijah does something kind of surprising. Let's read. Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Go and do what you said. Only make a little loaf of bread for me first, then bring it to me. You can make something for yourself and your son after that. Wow. This is what, and he begins to prophesy, this is what Israel's God, the Lord says, the jar of flour won't decrease and that bottle won't run out until the Lord sends rain on the earth. The widow went and did what Elijah said. So the widow, Elijah, and the widow's household ate for many days. The jar of flour didn't decrease, nor did the bottle of oil run out just as the Lord spoke through Elijah. Just reading those words brings hope, Bible hope. If God can do that for Elijah and then find a widow 
in the middle of nowhere and help her household and Elijah as well, then God can help me and he can help you too, no matter what's going on. Hebrews chapter 11, verses one through three says, now faith is the substance, the material, the stuff of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good report, good news, the gospel. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Can you see what's going on there? Bible hope is a picture, a blueprint, a dream, as it were, of what is possible for you and your family because of God's grace and his goodness. Faith is the spark of God in us brought by hearing or reading the good news. Good news that propels us forward to see our blessed hope revealed and become a reality here and now. Faith propelled the widow to believe the prophet because she heard words of God's hope from Elijah. Faith propelled four men to rip a roof off of a house so they could lower their sick friend to Jesus because they had heard good news about him. They had heard Bible hope. They heard about Jesus Christ, the Son of God, was a healer. Bible hope only comes from one place, the Bible. By hearing the word and by reading about the promises of God, the hope of God, the Christ of God, and what Jesus finished work at the cross through the broken body and shed blood has done for us. Romans chapter 10 says this, So then, whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved from whatever they need saving from. But how can people call on them if they have not believed faith in him? How can they believe in him if they have not heard the message of hope? How can they hear if no one tells the good news, the gospel, Bible hope? How can people tell the good news if no one sends them? As scripture says, how beautiful are the feet of the messengers who announce the good news, you and me and preachers and songs and testimonies about Jesus. But not everyone has believed the good news. Isaiah asks, Lord, who has believed our message? So faith comes from hearing the message, and the message that is heard is what Christ spoke. Wow. Jesus himself told Mary, Lazarus' sister, the, the, the man who died, he said, didn't I tell you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of the Lord? So today, build up your faith by hearing what God has done through Jesus Christ on the cross. Read Genesis and see the magnificent miracles and wonders. Read the Gospels and see the healings and provisions and marvelous life of Jesus Christ. Read about his crucifixion and his resurrection and read about how all of God's promises in Christ Jesus are yes and in him, amen, to the glory of God through us. If God asked you to do some great work or some great sacrifice to prove your faith, would you not try to do it? If you're ready to do this great thing, then why not do the simple thing that he asks you to do by being immersed in his finished work, his grace, his promises by believing his word. God is not asking us to do great things. God is telling you that he did great things for us in Christ Jesus on that cross. Second Kings chapter five says this, Elijah sent a message to him. He said, wash yourself seven times in the Jordan and your skin will be healthy and clean. Now, this was Naaman, a general who had come from a, a kingdom they were frequently at war with, and he came to be healed. Elijah, Elisha didn't even come to the door. He just sent this message, go dip seven times. But Naaman became angry and left. He said, I thought he would at least come out of his house, stand somewhere, call on the name of the Lord his God, and wave his hands over the inflict, infected place and heal the skin disease. You. The Albana and Parfar rivers in Damascus have better water than any of the rivers in Israel. Couldn't I wash in them and be clean? So Naaman turned around and left in anger. 
But Naaman's servants went to him and said, Master, if the prophet had asked you to do some extraordinary act, wouldn't you have done it? Why don't you do as he said? Wash and be clean. Naaman listened to him. So he went to dip himself in the Jordan River seven times as the man of God had instructed him. His skin became healthy again, like a little child's skin. God is simply asking you to believe. Like the widow and her son preparing their last meal, just believe what God has said through his son, Jesus Christ, and you and your entire household will be saved. Keep believing seven times. Keep reading seven times. Keep dipping in God's grace and God's mercy seven times. Continually washing yourself with his word and his promises in Christ Jesus. Dip into his love, his hope, his promises seven times. And what I like to call a seven layer dip. Just keep dipping. It's good. Believe me, God is good. And Jesus Christ is Lord. And you know what? And so is my sister's uh, seven layer dip. It's pretty good. 